resurrections are coming, there are five questions to restore New York City. Question one, how will you get New Yorkers back to work? Question two, how will you make our streets safer? Question three, how will you address the city's increasing budget deficit? Question four, how will you stop the exodus of residents from New York City? And question five, how will you bring back tourism? You know, I think for many that ad hits the nail on the head, identifying some of the major issues that will face the next mayor of New York City. Democratic primary, it's June 22nd, and whoever wins that will almost assuredly move into City Hall. There is not a ton of polling out there, but the latest numbers we have show that Andrew Yang, yeah, you heard me right, Andrew Yang, is in a lead, but with only 16%. Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, the only other candidate polling in double digits, rounding out the field, former de Blasio aide Maya Wiley, City Comptroller Scott Stringer, and former City Group Executive Raymond McGuire. There are a couple other candidates, but they're getting hash marks. Now, this is also the first time people will use ranked choice voting where they're going to pick their top five candidates, not just their first choice. That could prove to be a factor. My next guest, he knows New York politics as well as anybody, Mike Morey, managing director of the communications and strategy firm SKD Knickerbocker. And Mike, is it lost on anyone in the field because they're playing to obviously a progressive electorate that tends to turn out in the primaries that there's one audience, but then there's the broader audience of New York, which unlike four years ago, you or I could have done the job given that, you know, the city was running a largely autopilot. There are huge challenges that lie ahead, including obviously the business community is a part of it. Um, it seems that the messages for June are going to be a very different than the messages to the broader New York. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. The ad you ran, um, I think it's financed by Jim Dole and, and MSG. Um, and as much as there's a lot of um, anecdotal discussion about the degree to which is someone going to be able to run New York City or deal with these five major issues, the fact of the matter is this is a Democratic primary in which really the issues that are most important to the most progressive of the progressive are what's going to rule the day, which is why a candidate like Ray McGuire, um, though uh, flush with resources, um, and granted the polling is still a bit um, limited, uh, seems to be at the back of the pack, uh, and you have um, really just pure name ID running the picture right now. Uh, Yang, who um, has national name ID, uh, and Eric Adams, who represents uh, a massive part of New York City. Andrew Yang, um, I know it's early. I know there hasn't been a lot of attention paid to this for understandable reasons, but do you look at him right now the way there's a layout as leader in the clubhouse? Um, or would you be shocked, especially as we said with ranked voting and all the rest, that an outsider as much as Andrew Yang is could actually become mayor? Yeah, um, look, you always want to be at the top of the heap, and he certainly is right now. Uh, and being at the top of the heap, he's taking mo the most arrows. And so I'm not going to suggest that Andrew Yang, uh, Andrew Yang is, is in a, an enviable position right now, purely based on name identification um, and at a point in the campaign where the heaviest of the advertising hasn't happened yet. This is, will all shift shortly. Um, and when the big dollars come in and the big advertising starts to go, let's remember uh, that Bill de Blasio was in fourth place just 30 days before the Democratic primary in 2013. One breakthrough ad essentially brought him quickly to the top. Um, had no name ID, really, um, even though he had won citywide. Uh, and it was 30 days out, and the entire race was upended. So um, do I, would I want to be Andrew Yang right now? Sure. Um, but Andrew Yang is also taking most of the arrows, and the heavy spotlight is now on him. Everything from the way in which he is staffing his campaign to um, foibles and discussions or showing up to protests. Um, all the ink is built on his back, both because he's the front runner and because every candidate knows they need to pull him down a few notches. You know, I, I'm not going to debate because uh, you forgot more than I know in terms of, uh, you know, where at least the core primary electorate is New York City. But I, I think everybody cares that nobody wants to go back to the 70s for New York City. So from the safety aspect and having a clean city, um, wouldn't that resonate better than in most years that nobody knows what New York's going to really look like you know, when the curtains lifted after COVID, isn't that a non-losing message to say that I'm going to keep you safe? 
It's not a losing message, but it's not where in the scope of priorities that people have for what they want in an elected official. The safety message is does not overtake a message about the need to structurally reform uh, the public safety system, the police, et cetera. So um, those are wide, broad messages for a wider electorate. These candidates are playing in a very narrow electorate right now, and that is not what's going to be at the top of most folks in New York City's uh, decision-making uh, uh, sort of calculation. Mike, uh, finally, let's move uh, from the city to Albany. Um, we, we've all seen the opus pieces on the... Uh, uh, you know, the 40 years of Cuomo and, and uh, whether people saw this coming, not, whatever the case may be. What are you hearing from those close that betting against Andrew would be a mistake here, given his uh, survival instincts, that he thinks he's going to make it through this? Or as these investigations start to produce more and now there's, uh, we saw more of the reporting right now with the hotline and the tips that are coming. There's no way he's going to make it through this, or if he does, he's not going to be governor again. Look, I don't think there were a lot of people who thought when the first cascade of stories happened that he would be where he is right now, and he is. Um, and part of that is because um, there is a process uh, that unfolds, and he's decided that um, come hell or high water, he's not going to be resigning, um, that the electorate put him in a pos the position he is in. And for the most part, the polling is borne out. Uh, that um, the majority of New Yorkers do not think he should resign. Uh, the question of what will be the outcome of the attorney general's investigation and how that might change the calculus, um, you know, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Um, but certainly the notion that he was going to step down due to pressure from state legislators, members of the federal delegation, uh, or anyone else for that matter, has shown not to be the case. I think the greater likelihood here is that um, he may consider uh, not running for re-election, um, but there has been not much yet uh, that has given any indication that he's willing to w willingly step down from office. Mike, always good talking to you. I appreciate it. Likewise, Richard. Good to see you. You too. All right, folks, um, we're going to leave New York when we come back, and we're going to go to Washington, or more specifically, to the media covering Washington. It's the second we call it So Right, They're Wrong. Tucker Carlson edition straight ahead after the break. We're going to show you why there are new calls for Fox to can Tucker as he's getting accused of now anti-Semitism, among other things. And by the way, what he's been saying has the full support of his network management.